All right, so today is um, October 20th, 2021, which means that my wedding is 366 days away. So today is Wednesday in the middle of week one of my wedding dress kind of planning and construction phase. And my plan is for t this week and next week, I'm just going to learn and try to practice everything I can about Tamar embroidery. I've been watching a lot of videos. I've been watching a lot of like Instagram tutorials. So by the end of next week, my goal is to have some sort of sampler done um, and just get a whole lot of practice and with a whole bunch of different techniques. So yesterday I took a little bit of time and I carved out some room in my um, bullet journal that just kind of turned into a diary of notes. Um, so I took some notes. I was looking at some pictures of the Dior Junon gown, which is what I'm kind of basing mine off of and I'm taking a lot of inspiration from. And if I counted correctly, there should be about 34 petals total on the Junon dress. I need to pull out my mock-up of the skirt that I was working on earlier this year and see kind of where I'm at with how many petals that thing has on it. But if I'm basing mine off of the same kind of proportions as the Junon dress, there should be about 34 petals total. So I did a little bit of um, digging around and clicking around on a calendar. And if I start at the beginning of November, which gives me, you know, this week and next week to practice and get a whole lot of um, like ideas in. If I can complete one petal a week for the next 34 weeks, that'll put me being done with all the petals at the end of June, which will still give me about three months of kind of work time and leeway time. So my goal is to be done with the petals by the end of July. That gives me a couple extra weeks because um, some of the bigger ones are probably going to take a little bit longer. And then also we have the holiday season coming up. So there are probably going to be a bunch of days where I could be working on this, but I can't because I'm either driving or I'm with people spending time with them. So that gives me a little bit of extra time to kind of wiggle in. So one of the things that I want to do for the remainder of this week is I want to come out with a plan and kind of like a week by week of what I want to get done that week and my goal to get done that week. So I just kind of drew out some boxes for, for all of the weeks. I have, in theory, 56 coming up. There are 56. Is it 52? I always forget these things. But the point is, I have exactly one year before I need this dress to be 100% done. So coming up with the plan and kind of the week by week um, game plan of what I want to have done is going to be, I think, my first priority for this week. I want to have at least the next like 20 weeks mapped out. I want to come up with at least like 40 kind of themes and ideas of things I would like to put on these petals and have all my themed petals. And then I'll probably go through and like put stars next to the ones that are like the most important and the ones I absolutely want on my dress and then have a couple that are just kind of like backups in case I need something else or in case one design just isn't working out. I'm also going to have to pick a date, which I believe I'm going to pick like end of March, early April, somewhere in there, where I'm going to have to sit back and seriously evaluate where I am on my progress of my dress um, and see if it's even possible for me to get the whole thing done. Because if, you know, worst case scenario, I do wind up having to purchase a dress, I need time for alterations to be made. And Google, as well as a very uh, random TikTok that got sent to me as soon as I Googled it, which is a little concerning, but that's a problem for another day. Um, according to the internet, I should allow, you know, between three to four months for alterations. So if I need to go shopping and I need to get a dress, then I need to make sure that I have all of that done, like, before June. I'm also going to prioritize the petals right now and not worry too much about the dress itself. Because the dress itself, I think I'm going to use that same... Um, vintage repro pattern that I used for my blue dress with the little appliques on it and I did a I did a whole bunch of videos about that I'll, I'll link that in a card up above and I really like how that fits and I'm pretty confident with that pattern and if I absolutely need to I can turn that dress out in like two days I'm also hoping and praying and going to the gym and hoping that I lose weight before my wedding so the petals and the overskirt not much about that is going to change um, no matter if I gain a whole bunch of weight or if I lose a bunch of weight, a lot of that's going to stay the same. So I want to get that worked on and that kind of done and that out of the way. But the underdress itself, that can get adjusted, that can wait. At this time, I'm not planning on doing any like special timbre embroidery for that. I have a very beautiful lace pattern that I got from Jefferson Variety down in New Orleans. And there's some absolutely beautiful beading on it and it runs along the top and the bottom so I'm probably just gonna fussy cut out the um, the uh, the big beaded sections and just apply it to the top and around the bottom so I'm not too concerned about that so I think my plan for today is um, I'm probably going to run to a couple of fabric stores near me and pick up a couple of different options for um, embroidery I have a piece of 
it's actually crinoline tulle, so it's it's thicker and it holds its shape. And I was doing a little bit of um, experimenting with that. And I like the idea of using tulle, and I'm probably going to use tulle because I'm very new to um, timbre. But uh, one of the ladies that I saw on a uh, YouTube does not recommend tulle because you can't get the line exactly where you want. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I might start looking for a finer tool because this one does have a pretty open weave. I do also have the tool from my mother's wedding dress that I want to use in some capacity. Um, it's a very, very, very fine tool, but I don't have enough to do all of the petals. So I might kind of prioritize doing like the top petals with that. So I might be using that for like my last couple of petals, the ones that are going to be like right on top. And then I'm going to start coming up with my official list of um, ideas for designs that I would like. Um, things that are kind of like hidden messages, things that represent people or places or important things in our lives. So that's, so I believe that is what I'm going to be working on for the next uh, couple of days. So part of the fun of doing all this like making your own wedding dress stuff is having my mom pull out like her old wedding dress and giving it to me so I can like pick it apart for parts and bits of lace and beads and stuff. And she gave me her petticoat too and y'all. Now my mom has always been like this skinny, but look how tiny her little waist was when she got married. Like, this is, it's, I, I can maybe get this around my thigh. Maybe. Like, hold on. Like, come on. I know I have pants on, but still, this is like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that makes me feel just great about myself, doesn't it? But yeah, I'm gonna need a lot of tool, and this is some really nice, like, fine netting tool. Um, and mom said that I could just take this apart and do whatever I need to with it, so this is her petticoat. So I'm just gonna spray this down with some vodka and let it kind of air out for a couple of days, because this has been tucked away and packed away in her closet for, like, 30 years? So I know you can't really see what I'm doing because it's white on white on white, but if you're either new to this channel or you don't quite know what I'm doing here, the reason that I'm spraying everything down with vodka is vodka is an odorless deodorizer. This is an old kind of like stage costume trick that if you have something that you can't necessarily just throw in the wash to get it clean and to get a smell out of, especially if it's like a musty or even sometimes a sweaty smell, spraying it down with vodka, like letting it soak and then letting it air dry is gonna take that smell out. Sometimes it might take a couple of rounds, but it does work. If you're using something with a dye in it, you might want to spot test a little bit just to make sure that the dye isn't like alcohol based and this alcohol in here isn't going to make it run, but there's no dye in this. It's just white, so I'm not worrying about it. So this is also like the first time that I'm really getting to see like my mom's wedding dress and a whole bunch of stuff because like we didn't really have a lot of pictures hanging up in the house in general, but also my parents got divorced when I was like really little, so my mom just kind of like packed everything away and then didn't talk about it. So. Um, this is the first time I'm really going to get a good look at my mom's like wedding dress and stuff. Um, so she got married in, I don't remember if it was like late 80s, early 90s. So like that gives you an idea of kind of what we're dealing with. I don't remember much from the few pictures that I have seen, but I remember everything was big. This was big shoulder pads, big veil. Um, so I'm going to pull the veil out next and take a look at it. So here we have her veil and I think... My Aunt Susie, she said she thinks my Aunt Susie made this for her, and this is really pretty. And I really like these beads, and I like these little flowers, so I think these are definitely going to get a new life on my dress. Well, hello there! What day is it? Monday, November 8th, which puts me into week four of what should be this huge wedding dress journey. Um, I was not as productive as I would have liked last week, so I did not get a petal done fully. Um, but I did have some forces working against me, so in my defense, it wasn't entirely my fault. And it was for situations like these that I intentionally built in a couple of extra weeks into the schedule. So two really big things happened this week. The first was that on Monday of last week, Coleman had a very minor surgery. He is doing very well, knock on wood. But as you might expect, I've had to stay home and play nurse for him all week. Um, he didn't go to work, he'd been working from home. So between caring for him and changing his bandages and, and keeping his, uh, his scar clean, and also him just being home 24-7. I really didn't have a whole lot of time to work on this. I'm gonna be honest, I planned for him to be asleep more because I've only had one surgery in my life and it was for my wisdom teeth. And I just remember sleeping for like a week straight. Whatever medication they gave me, just it made me sleeping. 
So I was kind of expecting him to also be very sleepy and to be sleeping for most of the time so I could get a little bit of work done while he was asleep. But luckily, thankfully again, knock on wood, but his recovery has been going very well. He hasn't even needed the, uh, the pain meds that they gave him, which is very, very good. So he is back to work this week, which means hopefully I will be able to get a little bit of stuff with the, the big overskirt kind of drafted today. The second major thing that happened last week was the Animal Crossing update. And um, I know we're all going to be watching this in like a year and a half in the future, but it's, it's a big deal. <laughs> I've been having a great time. I've also been having a lot of my hours at work reduced. It's kind of a good news, bad news kind of situation because the good news is I get to stay home more and I get to work on some stuff a little bit more. But the bad news is, you know, money. <laughs> money would be nice. I kind of need money to live. But the week wasn't a total bust. I did get a lot of stuff done over the past like week and a half, two weeks. I did get a lot of practice in with my little sampler. So I officially decided... I hear voices. So I did officially decide which tool I'm going to use. It's a nylon netting from the Casa Collection at Joann's. I forget the name of the color, but from what I understand, they're not making that color anymore. So I just bought... How many yards? I have 30 yards of this tool to be able to work with. And I'm hoping that's going to be enough because I did some math and I did some analysis of the original Junon dress. And I think the original, I believe, has 34 petals on it. So if I recreate it very similarly, I should have 34 petals. And some of these petals are going to be very big and they're going to need their entire one yard by one yard square to make. But also some of them are going to be smaller and I can kind of sandwich them in a little bit and get two or three on per yard. All right, camera died, so I had some snacks and a cup of tea. I remember I was talking about the tool that I got. The tool is ivory, but honestly, it's so sheer that it's not really gonna matter that much. I have decided that I want kind of a warm white, kind of an antique white to my dress. So pretty much the big decision that I made last week was what color I wanted my dress to be. So in most situations, white is white and white is white is white is white. But when you get into things like wedding dresses and painting, especially painting your house, there are infinite shades of white. But taking into consideration me and my colors, I don't really like how my coloring, I don't think a bright, stark, like super bleached white, I don't think that's gonna look good on me. I want a little bit of a softer white, a little bit of a warmer white, um, kind of an antique white. So something that I did last week was I went to a couple of different craft stores and I got a whole bunch of different shades of white thread. And I did a little sampler of the names of those threads so that I could hold them up to different kind of underlay fabrics and decide which one I like the best. The problem here is I have no idea what fabric I want for the underlay, but I really need to get started on the embroidery. So I need to hurry up and do that. So real quick today before Colvin comes home from work, I want to do one of two things. I would like to take out my mock-up that I made back in like April of last year and take a look at that, look at the, the shapes of everything and how everything's kind of laying. Just to double check which shape of a petal I want, I have a version that's a little bit elongated and a version that's a little rounder and shorter. I also want to finally take out my mother's wedding dress from its storage and take a look at that and see what I'm working with there. I also really need to clean my room because it is a disaster area and I really need to get that clean before I start working with all my white fabric. But this is kind of what I was talking about, how I did a bunch of different um, like samplers or samples of the thread colors. So this is an off-white thread. This is silver. This is pearl. Um, it has a really pretty luster to it. I don't think the camera's going to pick it up. Um, I have off-white, soft white, soft white. I didn't go back and cross my T there. Um, and then snow, white, and then these down here are all the beads that I have and some of the sequins. So this is gonna kind of be a uh, like a sampler that I'm working with. This is the, I tried to make a plumb bob because I was watching a sim stream. Uh, this is the first thing I made on this mesh and it was an absolute disaster and I couldn't get it to work. Um, and then I was really, really scared because at that point I had already bought 30 yards of this. Um, so I took a break. I, I sat on it, I slept on it, I came back the next day, and it went so much better. So I'm feeling a lot more confident with this mesh because this is a very fine mesh. Um, it's also pretty stretchy. It has some stretch um, going one of the ways in it. So that's a little bit frustrating and a little difficult to work with, but I'm making it work. I think things are turning out really well. So I think I decided that my favorite shade of white is the snow white because it's still a kind of a bright true white without being like in your face kind of white. So I think that's the one I'm going to go with. All right. So it's been 
a couple of months since I filmed the first part of this, which was the veil. Um, but I had a surprise day off of work today and I was up doing productive things anyway. So I'm going to dive into my mom's actual wedding dress today. So I have that in a bin right in front of me. So I'm going to take a look and see what I'm working with. What is this? This is not the actual lace. Is this? I didn't, no, this isn't my lace. Where did this come from? Yeah, because this is my actual lace. Ah, there's your sneak peek of my lace for my dress. I'm so excited. Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. So here is my mom's dress. Let's, uh, is that mildew on the inside? Oh, no. Let's open her up. All right. Oh my God. Look how tiny her waist is. Oh, the buttons are heart shaped. That's cute. So I don't know if she made her dress or if she just decorated it. She might have made it. I don't see any labels on it. I know she glued the beads on and I smell the tacky glue. <laughs> oh yeah, that is tacky glue that has been sitting for years. It's the beads are so or the buttons are sewn on at least. So here's the front of her dress. That's pretty. It's very, very 90s. <laughs> very early 90s. And there's some um tool to help the sleeves puff out a little bit. Oh yeah, I can do something pretty with this lace. I'm also a good like 80% sure that these are the exact beads that I bought from Joann's, these longer ones. So there's an alteration. It looks like the shoulder was taken in a little bit. So this is also shorter than I expected because my mom is close to my height. So there's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to get this whole thing on, but maybe I can like step into it or something and get the front of it on. Let's try that. Let's see. We'll have a laugh or a cry. All right, so this is as close as we're going to get because my mom has always been a twig and I have never once been. Um, like, even just, this is not wide enough for me. I really want to steam this to see how it looks, but I hesitate because I'm worried that the, uh, the steam might mess with the glue. So here's her dress. Can I even do up like the, uh, I can do up the wrists. I've always had tiny wrists. <laughs> that fits. All right, let's do this one. This is definitely a dress that you're not meant to get into by yourself. Cause this has like proper tiny buttons all the way up and down the back. There's about five inches of a zipper at the very bottom where it switches over to the, uh, what is this, satin? So that edge was left raw. Maybe she did a, maybe she did make this. I'm gonna go steam this and see what happens. Why is this? The hem, is the hem weighted? That's interfacing. Look at that feasible interfacing. Maybe she did make this one. Yeah, she made it. Somebody made it. I think she made it. Let me go steam this and see what happens. <laughs> this is fun. So I hope you're going to be able to see with all this white on white on white, but here is uh, my mom's wedding dress. And I even, look, I even put her veil on. Look at that. I'm actually not bad at the veil and my hair. And I'm glad I did this because I still have no idea what I'm doing with my hair, but I actually kind of like it in this like half up, half down, naturally straight kind of thing. I actually really like this super low back. I don't know if the cathedral's gonna like a super low back, but I like this super low back. So part of me really wants to reuse this satin on the skirt, but there are a whole bunch of little stains on it, and I'm not sure that those are gonna lift, because they've been, you know, sitting in there for 30-something years. I'm definitely going to steal the lace off the bottom of this. I think that'll be really pretty to use on some of my little petals. I'm not sure how I feel about the Chantilly lace on the sleeves and on the bodice. I'm not the biggest fan of like Chantilly lace in general. It's starting to fit a little better the more that I like wear it and stretch it out a little bit. 
I think I need to take some pictures of this and send them to my mom. I think she'll get a kick out of that. I'm not going to button the whole thing, but in theory, the sleeves fit. I've seen this trend on like Pinterest where people take their mother's wedding dress and turn it into like a cocktail dress for the rehearsal. And I'm not mad at that idea. I actually think I, uh, I think I rather like that. But then I have to keep the lace on the bottom because the lace on the bottom is what really makes it. I don't know. I'll have to sleep on this. It's like, I like the shorter veil. But I'm getting married in a cathedral, and I feel like that would be a massive missed opportunity to have a cathedral veil for a cathedral wedding, so... I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Alright, so it has been a couple of weeks. I have not done too much. Um, but I did want to update you real quick because I did get my first uh, petal done. I'm kind of treating this as my sample petal, so if I need to use this one on the dress, I'll have it, um, but I'm not really planning on using this one specifically on the dress, um, but I really wanted to use this one to kind of get the feel of the, the shape of my pattern, how much all of these little um, motifs, um, and about how long it would take. So I have this app that I've been using, and I've just been using this to keep track of the time that I've been spent doing the actual embroidery. So to do this panel, this has taken me probably about that's like an hour 15 plus 345. So that's what, like six hours. So it's taken me about six hours to do all of this, um, which if I'm thinking about doing, you know, a, a pedal a week, six hours of work a week is not bad, you know? And if I add in some motif or something decorative in the middle, that's probably going to add in like two or three more hours. So, I mean, nine hours of work over one entire week, like that's an hour and a half a day, if that. And and my brain sometimes goes into like hyper focus mode where I can sit down like this is this is four almost four hours that I did just today. And I can crank out like three or four hours of this in one sitting. Something else that I did notice and I did learn that I think is going to change my game plan a little bit is that doing the embroidery with just the thread goes so much quicker. I'm getting really, really efficient at doing that. Um, like if I'm not working with any of the sequins or any of the beads, I can get, like I got the whole outline done in maybe like half an hour. So I think my game plan going forward is um, for all of my petals, I'm going to focus on doing the thread embroidery first and try to knock that out as quickly as possible because I can do that pretty quickly. And then I'm going to come back on top of that once I finish that and then add in the, the beads and the sequins and the uh, little other embellishments that I'm going to be working with. But yeah, that's my first one done. So I'm actually going to um, put all of this away for a little bit and I'm going to allow myself some time to work on some other projects um, so that hopefully when I return back from traveling for Thanksgiving, this will be the only thing that I have to work on. <laughs> 